Hello everyone and welcome to my fully interactive Facebook Lives with the Wedding Guru, Oscar. We are going live in my Facebook page and my Facebook group today as well. And um, We have tried going live in the LinkedIn um, page as well. However, there is some connection issues and I will definitely figure it out for the next one next week. Um, today, I am super excited to be hosting Elliot BB Magician for this interview. It's a one of opportunity for us to go through questions with him as well. Elliot is super excited and he's organized a lot of wedding planning tips and hence especially relating to the entertainment and um, magic in fact that weddings is the number one entertainment item for weddings in 2021 which is super exciting and that's why I'm um, super amazed that I got um, I got Elliot involved with the interview today and a perfect opportunity for you guys to ask all the questions you might have for Elliot as well we will do the official introductions in just a moment as well but before we get started i just wanted to say that we are going live in my facebook page the wedding good at oscar so if you're here already fantastic you are in the right place and at the right time as well we're also going live in my facebook group which is the interactive facebook lives with the wedding guru oscar as well because we're going live in those two spaces today and um, i am using a streaming software called Streamyard. and um, for that reason if you decided to post any questions or comments and share them with us today make sure that you pop them in the comment box below and um, introduce yourself Yourself, say hello, introduce your name, tell us where you're coming from. We would love to have as many of you with us today as well. And um, if you decided to share your name with us today, um, right above me right now, there's a little link to StreamYard to um, grant StreamYard a permission to share your name on the screen. If you, however, decided not to do that, that's absolutely fine, no problem whatsoever. But please make sure that you mention your name before you ask questions or you make a comment or share share your opinions about anything we're talking about today as well because like I said we are using a third party streaming software and it doesn't pull through names automatically however if you wanted to share your name with us just um, give permission to StreamYard in the little link above now as well. Perfect. Um, a couple of um, obviously um, housekeeping things that I wanted to talk to you about as well. So we've covered the comments and we highly encourage comments today as well. The more questions, the more comments we've got from you, the more engagement interaction we've got as well, the more informative and the more relevant we can make this session. And it's obviously about advising you and giving you as much wedding planning information advice today as well um, as possible so again highly highly encouraging questions and comments as well I've got a little helper with me my friend's daughter is helping me with um, a couple of things today as well so she will be and um, sometimes maybe looking over to me to make sure that I am answering all the questions for you guys um, and like I said, this session is going fully live. And um, if you are, however, joining us after the sessions have finished live, um, you can watch them on repeat. And if you do so, make sure you comment hashtag repeat in the comment box below so that Elliot and I can always go back to your questions and make sure that we answer all the questions as well. If we get a lot of questions today, guys, don't worry. If we don't get to answer all the questions in a live video, we will make sure that we can get them covered for you afterwards we will go back to the comments and we will respond to all your questions there as well but we'll try to answer as many of them as possible we've already got likes we've got plenty of people with us and um, already as well which is super exciting we've got a couple of comments and um, exactly hello i don't know who you are guys this is a prime example of what happens if you don't grant permission to stream here to share your name you only come up as a facebook user so if you would like your name to appear with any comments or questions make sure that you give permission to stream here to share your name on the screen if you don't do that make sure you uh, mention your name before a comment or question that way elliot and i can address you by name as well right guys i think um there's plenty of us here already fantastic turnout thank you very much all for joining as well and um, without further ado i will get started with our presentation before i do a full introduction to Elliot, um, I just wanted to let you know about the structure of today's interview. So we will begin with a little introduction. We're halfway through this already, guys, so don't worry, not much longer with me. Elliot, the most important guest today, will 
will be with us in just a moment. After that, we will have the official interview with Elliot Vivian Magician, um, who you hear for the, the, the most important person. And finally, at the end of our session, there will be an opportunity for an open Q&A as well. So if you're shy or you don't want to ask questions um, after each one of our um, official questions, then there will be time right at the end of our interview to ask the official questions at the end as well. So you can leave them to the end, but we highly encourage to get involved with each one of the questions I've already organized. So Elliot has actually prepared um, eight questions for us today, and I will be going through them for you in, in just a moment as well, but there's plenty of time for us to cover other questions you might have for him as well. Lovely. Um, a little um, intro about myself and to why I am um, organizing these fantastic interviews. I am blessed to be working in one of the most creative industries in the world, the wedding business. Um, I work with people like Elliot. I work with so many wonderful and fantastic suppliers out there as well. The Wedding Guru Oscar, in fact, only started in December of 2019, um, just before the wonderful COVID, um, and things have happened, obviously, but I'm super excited to, to take you guys to the next levels, to the next uh, planning stages of your weddings. I've got plenty of weddings um, at the end of this year, the start of next year, and all through next year, and into 2022 already as well. Um, before starting the wedding good oscar before going independently as a wedding planner and a wedding venue consultant i've been involved in the wedding industry for over 10 years and um, in the first four and a half years of my career i was physically responsible for on the day running of weddings. I was acting master of ceremonies. I was operationally responsible for weddings with staffing order schedules, looking after the couple from bridal preparation all the way till the couple headed to their bed as well. And um, just all around logistical planning and managing of weddings that way as well. And um, after those four and a half years, um, I was granted my first position as a wedding planner for a portfolio of four um, city venues in Edinburgh and that's when I was looking after up to 75 weddings across four of these venues as well and um, after a year I was given my first managerial position and um, planning weddings for three luxury properties in Edinburgh as well and that's when I looked after over 130 weddings and um, in that time I was very fortunate and um, to have been looking after couples from the moment of inquiry through the entire wedding planning process and um, final details Details planning, menu tastings, individual consultations, and on the day coordination as well. Um, in addition to my four and a half years operational background, that just gives me a very strong place in wedding planning as well. Um, in that time, I was honoured um, and uh, humbled by couples nominating me for awards and I have been recognised by the Scottish Vows Awards and the Scottish Hotel Awards on four occasions as well and it was during that time that I have contributed to the biggest wedding blogs um, Love My Dress and also the biggest Jewish wedding blog Smashing the Glass in addition to publications with Scottish Wedding Magazine and Tide Knot Scotland Luxury Scottish Weddings and Mass Scotland Wedding as well, just amongst many other things that I've been involved with in the past 10 years as well. But enough about me, the most important person is waiting to meet you all guys, so I'm not going to um, extend it any longer. I'm just going to head over and meet Elliot and introduce him officially to you guys. Hello, Elliot. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much for joining us Hello. today. I'm super excited to have you with us. Um, I've got obviously the first question for you, which is, in fact, an introduction question. So could you tell us um, what you do, who you are, who Elliot Bibi is, and what do you do? Uh, thanks for having me, uh, firstly. I um, think what you're doing is absolutely brilliant um, with all these lives that you do every week. Uh, now we've got it out of the way, you can pay me later. Um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a wedding magician. Um, so as well as being a wedding magician, I'm also all our different types of magicians, but we'll get back to that. But primarily um, performing at weddings. So most people are like, oh, magician, oh, you can entertain the kids or you can do this, but it's not. It's for the, it's the whole experience. So uh, usually uh, I come along, I uh, entertain, I do uh, close-up magic, hmm, had to rebrand that. Uh, that was my main selling point, was mixing and, mix, mixing and mingling with everybody uh, at your wedding day, doing close-up magic that happens in people's hands. So 
that's been parked for the moment. Um, so yeah, I've, we'll come back to that later on. But I, I've created a whole socially distance act now. But yeah, um, basically, it's creating a whole atmosphere. It's not just for me. It's not just about being a magician or being about the tricks. It's creating an atmosphere at a wedding. Um, and yeah, this this just magic is sort of a tool that allows me to do that. Fantastic. Perfect. And um, one of the things that I actually have learned um, last week during one of my um, interviews, Facebook Live um, interviews from Lisa, is that number one entertainment item on the wedding wish list for next year is magicians. So um, definitely the right person we've got in for you today. And Elliot's got years and years of experience. Um, you've obviously done um, weddings, you've done shows at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, and you've even travelled internationally with your shows as well so um i've obviously known of elliot for for many many years and i know how popular you are um, and i know how far in advance you get booked up as well which is um a testament to yourself and fantastic um entertainment you provide for weddings and like you said it's not just about tricks but it's actually about creating that atmosphere of a wow factor and surprise i suppose as well yeah, I think, as I say, like uh, weddings probably take up about 50% of the work that I do. The other 50% is I do a lot of corporate stuff and then stuff on yeah. stage as well. So um, being an all-round sort of guy, being able to do the close-up magic at weddings, um, I also now do sort of like a Toastmaster type service. So not a full-on mm -hmm. Toastmaster. If you want a Toastmaster, go with them. Or It just saves people in your venue, um, like your uh, wedding planner or whatever, um, standing up and announcing them especially I've been to so many venues where that person is amazing at the job but when they try and stand up and speak yeah. oh, you get some brilliant ones and then other ones are a bit shy so I, yeah. I can also do that as well which is the sort of stand up thing which is quite nice amazing that's brilliant fantastic brilliant guys lovely and um, like i said to begin with a few of you have joined us since we've started so i just wanted to reiterate to you guys that we're streaming live we're streaming live to my facebook page and my facebook group as well today and we highly encourage questions comments and opinions in the comment box below and um, if you are joining us live and um, if you wanted to share your name make sure that you give permission to stream or to share your name with us on the screen if you don't do that that's absolutely fine and we will get a little notification like the one from the start of the show with facebook users so just make sure that you mention your name before questions or comments and um, and like i said to begin with the more questions the more comments and opinions we've got from you guys the more interactive and the more informative we can make it for you as well and elliot is here just one off interview with me today so the more questions he can answer for you and um, the more we can help you with the wedding planning and especially planning for wedding entertainment as well perfect guys i'm just um checking if uh, we're all here fantastic any questions so far so good but guys fire across questions at any time and we will and um, we will get to you as well lovely since we've not got any more questions and i know this is just an introduction we'll get into the nitty-gritty things in just a moment as well I will ask question number two to Elliot and we'll see how we get from there. Okay. Question number two, Elliot, for you. How long have you been in your um with your business? Um, how long have you been doing this? What's your kind of background to get you to start an Elliot Baby Magician? Um, so yeah, it's been I've been doing magic now. So I'm 28, so I've been doing it since since I was 10 years old, so about 18 years. Um, wow. I saw my first saw my first ever magic trick in Hamley's, the big toy shop in London, and I was about that high, which obviously doesn't make any relevance because you don't know where the floor is, but I was quite <laughs> small. Um, and yeah, and I uh, yeah, saw this guy demonstrating this little coin trick. I got suckered in and spent all my pocket money on that little coin trick, and I practiced and learned and did it for for years through school and high school, and always just as a hobby at the side, and always focus on my, my studies. And uh, and then I entered the, my high school talent show, as you do, and ended up winning it. Um, and I thought, oh, yeah, this is great. Uh, and you know what? I've actually still got that video from my first ever performance on stage, and it's it's horrendous to look back on. It. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's never, no one is ever going to see that. <laughs> you can pay me any money in the world, no one will ever see that that very first show. But it's always nice to look back on it. 
Um, and then I went from high school, went to uh, went to university, and actually studied engineering for four years <laughs> wow. um, in Edinburgh. And still had the magic on the side, and then that's when I started doing sort of little private parties and people like that's how I made loads of friends uh, at university. That was my first little intro. Was like, hi, my name's Elliot. Watch this. Here's a magic trick, um, and got known as that person that does the magic. And then I remember it was in my fourth year of university where we had to do like an optional module. Um, so as well as doing like all the engineering and sports and stuff. Um, uh, there was optional modules such as like business or wine tasting or uh, I ended up taking marketing just because I thought you know what I got to four of you and I'm like I'm probably not going to be an engineer because I just love magic so much and entertaining people and I thought you know what I'm going to do um, marketing uh, so I'll be able to market myself as a magician when I graduate so I did a whole term of uh, marketing just as an optional thing and our little group ended up getting best in year <laughs> um, right. which was quite funny um, and then yeah I graduated uh, missed my graduation ceremony which we'll come back to later on oh wow um, to my mum and dad's delight um, and then I was actually in Las Vegas uh, working in a show out there for three and a half weeks um, that's why I missed it and then I came back and thought you know what I'm going to give this a go I'm going to be a full time magician um, and initially at the start I was doing everything I was doing kids birthday parties balloon modeling corporate events weddings wow. absolutely everything um and then i really narrowed it down to just be, do uh, weddings and uh, and the stage stuff a few bits of corporate so that's sort of me in a nutshell and um, there's so many stories that i can go off i love going off on tangents <laughs> so you need to keep, well, try and keep me to the track so <laughs> no that's brilliant there's there's already quite a few questions um coming up for you as well which Definitely. is which is great in relation to what you've just been talking about as well um, we've got a question from Caitlin. I'm just going to pop it up on the screen. What's the most popular trick everyone asks for? Um, so, yeah, for there's one trick in particular that people ask me about, and it's it's something that I've that I do at weddings, and I don't know that many people. I call it the showstopper effect. So, uh -huh. if anyone types in my name uh, and then showstopper trick or effect uh, into YouTube, you'll see us sort of video describing it and it's an exclusive trick that i do at weddings for the the couple and this usually takes place um after the the meal so after the wedding breakfast um usually during teas and coffees i sort of come in i stand up and sort of announce myself into the room and i perform a 10 15 minute sort of stand up show in front of the whole room so it means that if anybody didn't get to see me and um, whilst i was doing maybe close-up magic during the drink reception or um, then this is the time that everyone gets to see me. And I do this special trick called the showstopper trick. And it actually it involves a Rubik's Cube where the couple, right. um, it's, the Rubik's Cube is solved. Um, they sign one side of it. So the couple get them to sign both sides of it and one side of it. Muddle it up. I take it back and then visually solve the cube with one hand. So then wow. that's now solved. I then make the cube disappear and then it reappears in this impossible location. Uh, which I won't, I won't ruin. I won't ruin the surprise in case anyone does book it. Um, and then uh, they get to keep that little souvenir um, to take home with them. And I've actually had emails from people saying, um, like months later, saying, "Oh, we've we've still kept the Rubik's cube." And what what's it? I'm trying not to give it away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trying, of course. We're trying to keep that. Um, and people put it on their mantelpieces. It's a real talking point. Um, so that's imagine. called the showstopper trick. So that's what uh, at weddings most people. Uh, ask for that what is that i saw that online i saw someone posting about that uh, what's that trick um so that's probably one of the most popular ones for weddings yeah you yeah, and was actually saying tell us oh, about the showstopper yeah. so that's exactly the one you were talking about as well that's hi you and great to see you as well thank you for joining us of course yeah. um guys we've got more questions so um with um i'm not going to start with my questions i'm actually going to move on to your questions do the clients um, get to choose certain style of tricks you do, or do you always have a mixed bag with you to judge the crowd on the day? Yes, yeah, a great question. So my style of magic is very sort of improv -y, um, almost as if I'm making it up as I go along, although everything I do is heavily scripted. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I've got certain tricks that I've got on me, stuff that I'm at a stage now where, um, as a magician, you can go out and you can buy lots of different magic tricks. They come in a box, bog standard, and they've got like a script which you can follow. 
go out and perform it. Lots of people do that. Um, or you can create your own stuff. So I was sort of, when I started to learn magic, um, people sort of older than me would learn from books um, and sort of DVDs and obviously the generation now and people, younger magicians are learning from YouTube and TikTok and all these places they are learning magic from there. And I'm sort of in that generation in between where I would read books and I'll always encourage people to sort of read books if they want to learn magic because you read the book and you interpret the trick in your own way, which means that you can sort of create your own spin on it instead of just sort of watching a YouTube video and copying it because then you're sort of a copycat. So I'm at the stage now where um, I probably say about 85, 90% of what I perform is original stuff that I book, uh, that I um, that I've created myself. So if you were to book different magicians, um, I know lots of magicians that go out, they're absolutely fantastic entertainers, but what they're doing, um, they've not created themselves. So, and obviously yeah. as an audience, or you wouldn't know otherwise, but if you go to a wedding, and you're like, oh, there, that magician did the same trick as another magician I saw. So um, if you were to see me perform, most of the stuff I perform is, you'll never have seen it before. So, cause I've created it myself. So I sort of come up, I've got lots of stuff on me. I'll sort of read the crowd. I'll um I usually get the questions like oh can you make my wife disappear or can you uh, can you make my husband disappear all these different questions like this. and I've always got like a little answer can you turn this uh, ten pound note into a twenty or there's always questions and I always try and um, sort of play on that so if yeah. someone was to say turn this oh we'll do it later on actually turn this ten into a twenty I'd be able to do that um, wow. so I'm a sort of very improv style type magician I almost turn up as like a I've been booked before as like a secret guest where right. uh, people, people, the couples don't actually tell anyone about me. And I turn up and just sort of chat and mingle and people are like, who's this guy? Uh, is that <laughs> a, a, a relative? I don't know. And then I'll just sort of do a little bit of magic and people are like, oh, hang on, what's this? And then I sort of go into the full on show. So yeah, most of the stuff is sort of improv and yeah. But if people do have a certain request, I'll always chat to the couple and be like, oh, well, maybe they, they really like football. So what I'll do is, um, as well as doing my big showstopper trick and the bigger during the bigger performance, I'll maybe um, create a trick to do with football um, or a favourite football team or a special item. If someone's, maybe they've grown up with a little teddy bear um, and had it and maybe I can incorporate that into my trick. So if anyone at all has any requests, I'll always try and weave that into the magic. That's what I love doing is, creating those very unique special moments because obviously wedding days are very unique for and special days um for the couple so the i always try and try and do yeah. that yeah brilliant and it's it's interesting what you've said it's about reading the the crowd definitely because um you see what how people are responding with it and you can kind of gauge it by that as well but um i think it's important obviously to mention that um not having entertainers or not having magicians or not having any entertainment at drinks reception stuff like that where guests are kind of left to themselves and um, makes a massive difference to their experience so having somebody who can kind of occupy their time and entertain and do it I was, I, icebreakers and stuff like that because like i said it's a lot of the time is a talking point where you get to um the next person and that group is already amazed and they're having a bit of a conversation oh have you seen this what did you think about that it's it's a conversation started for sure as well yeah, lovely absolutely. um well, thing, like, usually the it. drink receptions people are people are sort of walking around they're like oh it's two families that have come together they don't really know each other so as i say yeah. it's a great icebreaker and it gets people chatting but also that's the worst thing you want is like people sort of stand around go i don't know where don't know anybody yeah. or oh, where's those canopies gone I'm going to have another drink. <laughs> When's the yeah. food happening? When's that happening? These photos are taken for ages. That's why yeah. I say it's great for me to come in and entertain everyone during that part. It's also great for the photographer as well. I've got so yeah. many friends that are photographers and it's just great because instead of them just shooting people, just sort of standing there like this, you're getting There's like crazy with their drinks or something like that. Oh, like if you go on my website or the photos that you're putting up just now, you see like people's reactions as well. So it really yeah. makes a, a really nice photo album as well. Definitely, definitely. We've got another question from Ewan. Um, Ewan says, do you think you could fool Penn and Teller? Um, no. <laughs> no, I, um, I don't, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to try. I actually um, had an email um, 
uh, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'll say anyway. Um, <laughs> from them basically saying, um, would you like to sort of put an uh, addition together? Because they're filming a new season coming up, mm-hmm. I think it's in a couple of months. So I had an email from them and I submitted a video um, of something that I would perform on the show if I was to do it. And uh, I've not heard back, so... Aww. Never know. Maybe, maybe one day I'll get the chance to to perform. And uh, I met them when I was in Vegas. Uh, really nice people. Really down to earth as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fingers crossed. You know, these things don't always happen immediately. Maybe. It could be over exactly. time or something. You know. So perfect. Yeah. Fantastic. Right, guys. We've got questions coming in. I'm gonna move on to my next question, and we'll answer more questions as we go along as well. But like I said. Um, if you have just joined us, make sure that you pop the questions in the comment box below. The more questions we've got, the more engagement we've got from you guys, the more relevant and informative we can make it for you as well. And this is just a one-off opportunity for you to ask questions from um, from Elliot, who's obviously um, number one entertainment act for um, entertaining weddings at um, in 2021. Sorry, I got stuck there a little bit. Um, and it would be great for you guys to obviously soak that information in as well. So the more questions we've got, the more um, we can give back to you as well. Um, and if you are um, asking questions today, um, make sure that you approve um, the little notification from um, StreamYard um, to ensure that we can show your name on the screen or obviously mention your name before the comments or questions. Okay, okay, right. Question number three, the official question. Um, how many weddings would you work with um, on average per year, Elliot? Um, I would say I usually work about 50 to 60 weddings a year, um, which is um, something, it's a lot less than other magicians. But I'd say this is, this is what I, I do. I'd say 50% uh, probably weddings and the other half is I'm either performing at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, um, or I'm out in Australia performing at the Fringe Festivals out there. Um, so I'm God. all constantly traveling over the place. So weddings, I absolutely love weddings. Like, I could potentially just go and just do all of the stage stuff, but the thing about I love about weddings is, like I said earlier, just there's so much fun. And I love catering for the couples as well and just seeing how I can add that little bit extra. So yeah, probably about 50 to 60 weddings a year. Which is obviously Brilliant. still quite so, a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. Like when you think about it, it's at least one wedding a weekend. So yeah. You, and you know, when you put it in that kind of statistic, then that means that you're focusing on one wedding per week as well. And I think that is a big selling point as well. You're not tired. You're not having to go from one reception to the other. You really, you really giving your all to every single one of your um, yeah. weddings and events as well, which is which is fantastic. Absolutely. I was gonna say I um I used to do uh, this was I said I've been in weddings probably for about five or six years as like my yeah. full time job, um of just doing that and um, performing and I used to do two or three weddings a day because you could do the wedding breakfast you could run across or drive somewhere else, do like a later um wedding breakfast and then do another one like for the evening reception as well so I used to do two or three a day. Um, yeah. And it was just crazy. But and then I sort of I, I did that for about a year, and then I realised because obviously I'm I'm not married or engaged yet. I don't want my girlfriend to watch this. <laughs> um, <laughs> no plans. There's no plans for that. <laughs> well, I'll put my phone in there. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, so I didn't I had no real concept initially of how big a day this was for yeah. someone. Obviously, I know about it now, but after performing at hundreds of weddings. So what I do now is I only um, only take one wedding book in a day. Um, yeah. Obviously, next year I've had to, I think I've got two, a couple where I've got two a day purely because of having to reschedule everything for next yeah. year, for next year, uh, for yeah. this year to next year. But uh, that's a rule of thumb for me. I only take one wedding book in a day. So it means that if your wedding is overrunning at all, which potentially could be, um, I will... I'll obviously I'll be there on the day. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to be like you boot me from two till four. It's uh, that's four p.m. See you later. I'm out. So I'll. It doesn't matter if it overruns. It's fine. Um, yeah. I was doing a wedding once and it overran. Uh, the drink reception were, was three and a half hours long at a wedding in Edinburgh because the couple went away to get their photographs taken up Carlton Hill oh, wow. and tried to come back and they were uh, stuck in traffic. 
So luckily I was there to obviously keep everyone entertained and obviously yeah. because I'm not just one of these magicians that just buys a magic set and just does a set trick because I'm quite creative and have a whole like hundreds of tricks that people are going to see different stuff and I managed to sort of hold the room and the couple came back and they're like, well, they were panicking because they're like, well, what are all the guests going to be like? And they were absolutely yeah. fine. So. There you go. And just proves the point that it, it makes a difference having somebody there to look after the guests during that that break where there isn't really much of a purpose apart from the turnaround or the bottles. Yeah. I almost act, yeah. I almost like um, acting as a host. So almost like a, yeah. a magic magic host where I'm obviously engaging the, the with the room of what material I'm going to do, but also saying, right, okay, this side over here look as if they're a little bit awkward. So then I'll go to that group. This group over here are obviously chatting quite a lot. Um, also as well, um, you've got to sort of gauge who who wants to see magic because not everybody likes magic which we'll come yeah. on to later on um and yeah so not everyone likes magic and that which is completely fine some people just want to chat some people want to have a drink some people do want to see it so yeah perfect lovely we have got a question from the audience again and um, guys like i said before fire the question in the comment box below elliot is more than happy to answer them for you and the more um interactive we can make it the better so question we've got here is how long do you entertain guests uh, it's a double question i'm, I'm assuming guests at like a wedding um and do you do you do entertainment for children uh, yeah, so um, as I say, usually if I'm performing at the drink reception, that's roughly roughly about two hours, hour and a half, two hours. But as I say, I'm really flexible. Um, I must be one of the only entertainers that doesn't have an hourly rate. I book yeah. per section section of the wedding. So as I say, if it means if you are overrunning, doesn't matter, I'm there. So it's usually from the moment the ceremony finishes uh, until a couple walk into the room for the wedding breakfast. So whatever that gap is, I'm there to entertain. Um, I wouldn't class myself as a children's entertainer, but I'm probably one of the only a handful of magicians in Scotland that can perform for kids and adults alike. Uh, I actually worked in mm -hmm. Hamleys in Glasgow, the big toy shop. I worked there while I was at university for about a year and a half, two years. Um, and that's where I basically learned how to perform for kids, but also adults at the same time. So yeah. uh, instead of booking just a specialised kids entertainer to entertain the kids in the corner or just a serious magician, um, that's where I sort of slot in right in the middle that I can perform for kids and adults as well. Brilliant, fantastic. I think that was a really good question as well, because it is quite a lot of the time people are thinking, you know, will we have somebody that will be quite universal between the crowds? And if you can do both of them, then that, that obviously covers quite a lot of ground for them as well. Guys, um, if you agree with everything we're saying, any opinions, any questions, pop them in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up or a yes or a no. Um, and we would love to see your interaction. Obviously, like I said, the more we've got from you, the more we can give back as well. We're going to move on to the next question just now. So, Elliot, um, what aspects of your role do you love the most what motivates you what do you love about your what what what, what you do i suppose um yeah absolutely just love being part of the day really it's just nice to get out of the house um <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> um i just love being out there performing as i say for me it's obviously the magic is there but it's almost secondary secondary i'm i'm there to sort of um create that atmosphere at the day put a smile on everyone's faces that's what really is for me is getting that feedback from people and entertaining them and showing them something they've probably never seen before and something that they'll probably remember for years to come that's the nice thing as well about magic and um, compared to any other sort of entertainment and i usually have people sign cards or i have different things that i give away for people to keep as souvenirs and I've had people actually come up to me at the end of like my friend shows in Edinburgh and be like, oh, I was at uh, Stephen and Jack's wedding uh, two years ago and I've still got the signed card. I keep it in my wallet as a little souvenir. And that's lovely. It's great for me. It's a lovely ego boost. But the nice thing is that person is remembering Stephen and Jack's wedding. They, they're remembering yeah. where they saw the magic. So not you're not just having a magician to there to on the day to entertain everyone, but I'm there to basically create memories that people are going to remember and they'll remember your wedding day because that's at the end of the day that's it you want people to remember your day uh, yeah. compared to your friends or I mean there's so many weddings that I've been to that I can't even remember what 
the decorations looked like or what the chair covers looked like. And But I will remember what the entertainment was like and also what the food was like, if it was good or bad. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect. Well, we've actually got feedback for you coming up on the screen as well. Yeah. Uh, we've got Rosalind saying, Elliot was a hit at our silver wedding a, a good few years ago. I can only imagine he's even better now, although he was brilliant then. He amazed adults and children, very professional and highly recommended. Well, oh. this just speaks volume. This speaks for <laughs> itself. Um, thank you very, thank much. you very much for um, sharing your feedback, Rosalind. That just adds to what we're talking about here as well. It just makes such a difference having an entertainer there that can look after guests and does something that stays in people's minds as well. Perfect. Lovely. Um, we're going to move on to the next question, Gans. But if you've got any questions for us, pop them in the comments below. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible. If we don't get to answer all the questions during our live session today, we will go back in the comments and make sure that we respond to you as well. So, Elliot, can you tell us what inspires you in your in your business, in your role, and what you do at weddings and corporate events, I suppose? Um, so I'm always inspired when, usually when I turn up to the events actually, and I take a lot of inspiration from events that I've performed at. I mean, some of the, some of the other entertainments there, some of the, also all the professionals that I meet, um, that are just so professional in their job and they're just really, really good at what they do. So I also take a lot of inspiration from them. Um, that's on the side for weddings. In terms of personally as a magician, um, I take a lot of inspiration from, not just within magic, but from outside. So like theater, a lot of comedy as well. Um, yeah. Also on a side note, if you do like any comedians, uh, go and support all the comedy clubs at the moment because they are really struggling. So try and support them to keep live comedy going. Uh, I'll say Absolutely. that as like a comedy magician. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I'll always go to like the Stand Comedy Club in Edinburgh and um, on random nights and just watch and see how comedians sort of stand up and and entertain um also go to the theaters and stuff like that and watch so it's stuff that i'll sort of be inspired by that uh, i try and read as much as i can as well um and sort of take ideas from that and sort of improve myself so yeah that's what i'm sort brilliant. of inspired from fantastic brilliant great um guys um like i said before um pop the comments in the comment box below we'll answer as many questions as we can we've actually got a question relating to obviously what's going on at the minute and um, so we've got a facebook user guys again if you would want to share your name on the screen make sure you um, give permission to streamer to share your name with us on um, streamer to, to to feed it into facebook if not that's absolutely fine make sure that you pop your name before before any comments and we can address you specifically but we've got a question from facebook user just now how will you need to alter your services under covert um yeah so as i say most of the stuff i used to do um involves very like being up close with everyone close up magic having a laugh and touching all that stuff and Obviously, you can't do that anymore. Um, so I've actually been working, as well as been doing uh, an online virtual Zoom shows. I've been doing those on the side, but I've also been doing um, working on a brand new act, which is basically COVID compliant. So um, it's a completely safe act. I can perform, um, still mix and mingling between people, but uh, socially distanced. So the magic is still there. It's still. Um, it's really interactive, gets every people chatting and stuff. Um, obviously, I can't hand out a card for someone to sign, but if they give me information, I can write it on the card, so it's all still personalised. Um, right. There's lots of other things as well where I've basically completely changed my act. Um, after the first week of lockdown, I had a bit of a meltdown. Uh, I've gone, what am I going to do? Think, I think <laughs> we all perform? did, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, how am I going to perform close-up magic? But And then after, I thought, you know what, this is just an hour. It's just a little creative problem. How am I going to get around this? And I've and I've done that. Um, so if anyone was to book me or has any other events for like smaller things for their weddings, I can actually do that. Um, so that's for the close-up stuff. As, as I say as well, I do a lot of the stand-up stuff. Um, a bride has actually booked me for, um, it's coming up in a couple of months' time. And they're getting married and they're having 12 people, I think it is, um, from two households or two or three households anyway. But they're having it outside in the garden parties. And, wow. and what I'm doing is I'm basically doing a, it's a 45 minute uh, socially distant show where it's almost like a sort of fringe show where they're sitting there 
and I'm just performing. Um, and obviously, it still gets people interacting. I can still do stuff, and it's still the same. So it's just a sort of slightly different way of approaching it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you're absolutely right. I think it, it just comes down to problem solving with that and making sure that we are as compliant as possible. Um, yeah. And and you're doing things. I, I didn't even think about obviously signing the card. You would have thought, how can you replace that? But if you take the details and you write it in front of them, it's just as effective yeah. as actually them writing on the card. So perfect, yeah. fantastic, brilliant. Okie dokie. Guys, any more questions for Elliot? I've got a couple more questions to ask him anyway. But if you've got any questions, pop them in the comment box below. Give us thumbs up if you're liking everything we're talking about so far, and um, just so we see your engagement as well. And we're going to move on to the next question from me. So could you tell us about a most memorable wedding experience you've ever worked on? Um, yeah, it was actually, it was last year actually at uh, the Croon. I think I was going to say the Croon. It was either Croon or Lodge in Loch Lomond. Oh, right, okay. I'm slotted for getting those muddled up. Um, it was a wedding <laughs> venue at Loch Lomond. <laughs> the shores of Loch Lomond. <laughs> Um, and it was myself and another magician, uh, Billy Reed is another great magician. Um, I work yeah. quite closely with Billy, um, so if he can't do something, he'd pass it over to me if I can't do it. Because um, that's the thing with there's so many weddings going around, and as I say, I only try and take one wedding book in a day, so it means that um, if I can't do it, I'll pass it on to other people that uh, I trust as well, that are going to do a good job that I'd recommend. So um, we'd both been booked as... I think I initially I put it uh, in one of the Facebook groups as a little bit of a joke. Said, "Oh, you could book both of us uh, for your wedding, uh, Billy Elliot, as a joke." And then uh, somebody actually said, "Oh, that'd be really good if you could both do it." And I was like, "Oh, okay then." So I sent away, and they booked both of us, and it was absolutely brilliant. So myself and Billy, we mix and mingle between everyone just during the drink reception, and having two magicians there was amazing because. Um, also, because we were doing different tricks, it's also quite creative. Uh, we were doing completely different things. In people were seeing stuff. We covered all the guests, and then we did a special trick for. Um, on this occasion, it was a bride and groom. Um, special trick for them, where we both did something together. So that was quite memorable. But then at the wedding, they also had a flyover. Uh, so wow. they had planes fly over, which was amazing um, to see. Yeah, that's probably that stands out as quite a memorable gig. It's always great to to work with people that you know as well. That's now talking about you know making making memories and uh, making the wow factor elements as well. Fantastic! That yeah. sounds that sounds impressive. And and working with somebody else in the industry, like you said, you can kind of bounce back off each other as well. Um, and was it? Sorry, I, I couldn't remember. Is it was it quite a large crowd that you were kind of looking after? Um, I think there was about 100, uh, oh, right, okay. 100, 110. So no, it wasn't massive. I mean, if I was there, I would be able to do it myself. But I thought, you know what, if we have two people there, it's everyone. That's the nice thing is everyone, instead of me just going around showing a few effects, I get to spend yeah. longer with people. You get to know them a bit more. And that's when I can almost sort of pull out all the improv type stuff and get to know people like if... Um, in terms of like the, like I mentioned earlier about the football teams or any hobbies, and you can just let you do that on the spot. So you get to spend yeah. more time with people, get to know people more, um, and then usually people will say, "Oh, go and show something over to that person over there. That's my son over there. He'll he'll really love it." And I'll always try and get a little bit of information about it, and then go over. And it's almost as if you're trying to read their mind, and then you find that, and they're all the people that you've just that have just told you this information is. They are obviously having like a little laugh because they're going over and, and they're looking over and they're showing like they're seeing the reactions that they've just had. So it's really nice. Absolutely. I just remember um, you've done, when I worked at the hotels, you, you've done one of our kind of team events before as well. And my manager was uh, called up onto, onto the dance floor and you did the trick with the toilet roll and she was just pulling it out like, where's this thing yeah. coming from? Like, it was just so yeah. funny. Um, so there's an, an an element of comedy to it as well, which is which is great because it just relaxes people um, yeah. and makes a makes a massive difference. Fantastic, brilliant, guys! I'm just checking if we've got any more questions. I think we're good up to date so far. So I'm going to move on to the next question from me. Um, what's the most unusual request you've ever had at a wedding or at a show or at a corporate event? Um. 
probably oh, I've had a couple of requests. Um, so as well as doing weddings, I, I do quite a few hen do's and stag do's right. and stuff. And I had one at a, a hen do, and they I get this quite often. Can you just pretend that you're the stripper before you as you come in? <laughs> so usually I turn up and I'm like all ready to go with all my magic and stuff on me, and I walk in and. I'm like, hello, uh, hello, Diane. It's uh, it's me. I'm it's, I'm your special guest this evening. Take my tie off and just pretend I'm a stripper, and everyone's like, woo, all this stuff. Um, and then I'm like, oh no, sorry to disappoint you. I'm the magician. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's that's a usual. Probably about fifty percent of Hindus that I do, they, they request, oh, can you pretend you're a stripper when you come in? Um, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do it's it. It's probably for those brides to be here dreading the striptease kind of acts, and you just want to yeah. kind of pull their leg a little bit that way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, but I mean, as I say, I'm always up for a laugh. I'm always up for doing stuff, so I'll always do that. Um, also, another. Uh, this is sort of a story I was going to touch on earlier, but I'll tell you now. Um, I got booked as a surprise one. So, as I say, lots of people usually book me as a surprise. Um, but this was uh, a wedding I got booked at Glen Skirley, um Hotel Castle um, was a few years ago. And I got booked as a surprise by the father, uh, the father of the bride. Right. Um, he didn't tell anybody. <laughs> so I learned my lesson from this. So he didn't tell anyone, not even uh, the couple. So I turn up uh, at Glen Skirley and I'm waiting uh, to go. And I say I'm really early. I always like to get there nice and early. Um, and I'm, I'm waiting, and the uh, the couple come out from the ceremony, and the bride looks at me, and I, I recognise them. I'm like, I know them from somewhere. Uh, she looks at me, her face goes white, and she's like, what, what are you doing here? And then she was like, so flustered. Um, and then the groom's just, oh, no, it's fine, and they go outside for the photos. I'm like, this is very strange. Um, so then the, uh, the father bride comes out because um, everyone then goes outside for the group photo. He comes over to me and he's like, I'm really sorry, really, really sorry. Um, I've just found out that my daughter absolutely hates magicians. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, I, so I'm standing there. Uh, this this is the biggest day of her life and she hates magicians and I've been booked. And she's just the guy. <laughs> Fair play to me is that I'm really sorry. Um, and this was actually in the middle of August. So it was, it was, I think it was the very first day of my fringe show. So I'll always try and do, um, I've had like a few weddings booked in. Now I don't do any weddings in August if I can, because I usually do over, I think last year I did over 70 shows um, yeah. in, in, at the end of my fringe in three weeks. So it's just crazy. You head all the place. So uh, well to go all the drive all the way to pretty much Glasgow. Uh, stand there, get ready to go, uh, and oh no, can't perform. So he came up and he was like, "Just show me a few tricks." So I showed him a few tricks. He's like, I "I've paid you anyway. On, on you go. Dude. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry oh to waste God. your time." And and that was it. So I went drove all the way through there, performed I don't know three or four tricks for him, and then drove back. So if I if I am getting booked as a surprise now, I always make sure that the uh, the couple know about yeah. it. Um, and yeah they usually keep it a surprise for them and make sure that they like magic <laughs> yeah do you know what you've made such a really important statement here because actually um it is obviously a quite often when i work at venues and now work independently as well and there's family members getting in touch and they want to organize x y and z and stuff like that and i appreciate it that sometimes it is a surprise and if if you know for instance that the couple will be literally falling over themselves to have this um, item entertainment uh, a cake or something like that the wedding then by all means do it but it is being careful with what family members are organizing for the wedding and making everyone aware of it as well and checking if they're not sure because like you said that was such an unfortunate um, situation where you were ready to do it the the father yeah. loved it but the bride could have gone upset you, we, we don't know um, I actually had a wedding good few years back as well and they've organized for singing waiters at the wedding but neither the couple knew nor i knew about it um it was the, the parents of the bride that have organized it they never told anyone and then literally as we were about to serve the meal this group of people turn up and they go oh when when do we go um do you have aprons for us and stuff like that we were told that we we're getting aprons and i'm like who, who are you guys and we're we're singing waiters and i was like 
okay. One thing that comes to mind immediately is how am I going to accommodate for this? Because we've got a schedule to run. We've got an evening reception to get ready for. You've got a turnaround. You've got the meal to be served. When are they supposed to be going on between the courses or whatnot? That's just, and it's, um, yeah, it's it's important. And, you know, you didn't know. But um, I think I it's know. it's the conversation between the family and the couple and the venue, making sure that it works together. Because logistically, um, surprises like that can have a big effect on the wedding day as well. Mm. Perfect. We've got a question from Stuart. Have you ever been um, a surprise at a wedding where they loved you being there? Um, yeah. So there's been oh, there's been loads of times where I've uh, performed at weddings, and yeah, it's just gone down so well because at the end of the day, the couple, the couple, they're, they're booking a magician. They're not really sure. They oh, this would be really good, but. Because they're obviously they're away getting their photographs taken. When they come back, I can guarantee you, any wedding that I'm performing at, I guarantee at least three people will go up to the couple and say, "Oh my goodness, that magician is amazing!" Um, and and they'll tell their own story of what happened. And that sort of comes down to is that's what the, that's what you want in the end of the day. The couple are they want they want that they want they want it to see that it's a sort of a good investment for them as yeah. it's sort of paid off. They don't want people coming up going, "Oh, that magician's terrible." <laughs> He's, uh, and and you know what you you can get magicians out there which aren't good and and so it's all about you need to sort of see the magician firsthand see them perform live yeah. and sort of like them there's no point in just going oh well there's a cake tick dress kick uh, yeah. venue tick uh, magician tick uh, there's no point in just having something for the sake of it yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah it's been there uh, say so go back to, I've gone off on a tangent yeah there's a uh, it's it's, it's been absolutely amazing when you've turned up and it, you've been booked as a surprise. The guests are loving it. And that just sort of feeds back to the couple who feels that they've done a good job. And it also makes me feel good as well, which is nice. Absolutely. Um, I think a surprise is absolutely uh, brilliant. Like we didn't we didn't tell our guests about half of the stuff that we organised for the wedding, but it was just making sure that it all works perfectly and there's it just works for everyone and it works with the venue and timings and stuff like that. I think that that is important kind of lesson from here as well. But um, you've, um, it was something else that I wanted to say and it's literally just escaped me. Um, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. It was, it was interesting. Oh, it was actually about meeting the supplier. So like getting to know you, getting to meet you. You've got a fantastic YouTube channel that I've just checked out before we've gone live. You've got your tricks, you've got your uh, videos from weddings where you've attended. You literally show what you do and how you do it as well and the response you're getting from it as well. Um, and obviously under the circumstances, it is difficult quite a lot of the time now to meet in person, get a coffee and um, there's travel restrictions there's so many things that there we need to think about these days but that's why um, I actually decided to do these um, interactive Facebook live interviews so that we can actually speak to couples and show what we're about and how we work and what difference does that make to, to their wedding journeys as well but with today's um, technology there's Zoom, there's Skype, there's FaceTime, there's so many ways that we can connect and it is like you said important to have that point of contact to have that conversation to see how things gel together as well because um yeah there's so many options out there and it's it's making sure that it works for all the couples as well fantastic okay just Go for it. that one of the uh one of the things that i've been doing is obviously these obviously since i've not been able to get out and perform and everyone's sort of been stuck inside i thought how can i continue to perform and entertain everyone and at the start of lockdown i created a, a virtual zoom show um, uh -huh. which has really taken off. I've, must, I've done over about 150 of these shows now, and they're absolutely it's brilliant amazing. because it's great as well for a couple that have had to postpone their wedding. Um, I've done quite a few of these where they've had to postpone their wedding, and um, what they've done is they've got the whole wedding party together on Zoom, and I've performed um, uh, my, what's the name, it's a 40-minute 40, 40 show over Zoom, um, yeah. and it's still interactive, gets everyone involved, and they're just absolutely, absolutely. brilliant. Um, so I've been doing a lot of those, which has been good as well. And it's also good you can, if anyone wants to book them, you can check out my website afterwards and it tells you exactly how it all works. But also as well, it's good to obviously show couples like this is a little bit of what I'll do. These are the effects and stuff. Um, I can tailor these for you and yeah, just have a chat with people. 
Amazing. Guys, if you hang with us until the end of the session, I've got all the contact details for Elliot will pop up on the screen. So just stay with us to the end and we'll be able to share all the information there as well. And you will be able to check out, like I said, um, Elliot's got a YouTube channel. Elliot does the shows online as well these days where you can check him out and actually see how things um, work for interactive, um, obviously, magic. So that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got people saying I attended one of Elliot's Zoom shows. It was incredible. Thank you very much, Lee. Um, Thanks, Lee. Guys, I think that's another way of kind of getting to know you that doesn't mean booking you for the wedding. You can check out first and then make that decision. So definitely highly recommend that as well. Guys, we are almost right at the end of the interview today. So I'm just one more question away from um, finishing the Facebook Live today. If you've got any more questions right after my question, I will put them up on the screen and we'll go through as many questions as you've got before we finish up as well. Um, so yeah, head over to the comment box below, pop your questions there, let us know where you're coming from, what your name is, and we will answer that after my last final question I'm about to ask Elliot now. So, We've gone through a lot of things today, um, but the biggest part that couples always ask me is what advice do suppliers have for wedding couples? And obviously we can speak with so many different people, but I suppose from your perspective, could you tell us of one piece of advice you believe all couples should consider in their wedding planning from your perspective? Um, from my perspective, I would say think about think about what you spend money on in your day to day life. So, for me personally, I spend money on bills, um, but then out of that, I spend money on food and also entertainment. They're like the three things that I would spend money on. So, if you take that and put it towards a wedding, um, you'd obviously spend money on obviously the main things like your know, top ones like the venue um, and the food, like I said, food, um, and also uh, dress or suits or um, and also, but then you come down to the money you spend in your day to day life is obviously entertainment. Entertainment is totally overlooked um, at yeah. weddings, apart from maybe booking a band or a DJ. Everything else is just like, nah, we don't need it. Um, so I think I would say focus more on the entertainment because that's the things that people are going to remember. Um, yeah. And there's so much out there. As well as obviously, I'm here to chat about magic, but and obviously promote myself being a magician. But you've got string quartets, you've got um, caricaturists, you've got so many things like that people will remember. Especially with caricatures, they're drawn like caricature. People take that home, they remember it. So it's it's all these things, these little extras, which they don't even they don't even cost that much. But obviously, well, if you look at it and you go, well. How much is he for that? He just does a few card tricks. But when you actually look at what value I would add to a wedding, you're like, oh, it's definitely worth it. So, yeah. Definitely. And surprisingly enough, um, in the last three months before the wedding, a lot of weddings are able to stretch their budgets up to 30%. Um, and like us speaking with Lisa last week, actually, I suppose, how, how do you find it? Do, do couples book you very well in advance or do you find it that couples kind of leave it to closer to the time? Um, how soon would you recommend for couples to book you as well? I'd say it's a real mix because sometimes people will be like, oh, I saw I was at a wedding uh, last month and my friend had a magician and are you available next week to do ours? And I'm like, yeah. What next week, right? <laughs> but then I also say, I mean, I've got bookings for like next year is absolutely rammed. But what I yeah. say is, I'll always try and accommodate people. Yeah. Um, even for 2022, I've got loads of bookings, uh, especially for weddings, because people book people that this is the thing people see me, um, either at a wedding show or an actual show, um, whatever those were. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so people see me and they go, That was really good, we want him. Um, yeah. And then they don't get in touch. And then mm -hmm. they go, oh, I remember him. And like two months before the wedding. And then usually yeah. by that point, I'm booked up. So I'd mm. say that's another piece of advice. If you see something that you like, book it okay. <laughs> um, there and then. Even if you pay like a, a part payment or a deposit and yeah. just to secure them, just to get them there. And that's another thing with suppliers. Um, also myself, um, I don't know about any other suppliers, but I'm very accommodating. When it comes to money, um, I'll try and accommodate. You can 
pay it monthly, you can pay it in one chunk, you can pay it, usually for me, as long as it's paid four weeks before the wedding date, um, that's it. So I'm very accommodating with people, so you don't need to just go, oh, that's a big chunk of money. So, um, yeah, because as I say, you know, they've got lots of stuff going on. Amazing. Really, really good advice. Fantastic, guys. Right. We've got the time. A few minutes left um, to the end of our session today. Um, as we're waiting for your final questions and comments, Elliot is actually organized for a couple of tricks. I'm just going to pop him on the big screen just now. And right. over to yourself, Elliot. Oh, we're here, Brent. Um, so I thought we'd actually start off with this, um, this little piece of little piece of red paper here. Now, I did mention uh, earlier on, it was a little bit topical that uh, I've actually been changing my act for sort of COVID. So we take the piece of paper, we have the piece of paper, a little bit of heat, you can actually turn it into some <laughs> hand sanitizer. Brilliant. So, so handy. Anyway, that's all <laughs> I know, very handy. Um, but no, I did I did touch on earlier on that I, uh, I actually missed my graduation ceremony because I was in Las Vegas working on a show, um, which is a true story. And I came back from Vegas and I thought, you know what? Uh, I'm going to be a full-time magician, I'm going to perform at weddings, perform on stage, it's going to be great. I'll always be able to do close-up magic within two metres of everyone. I'll always be able to pack out theatres, it'll be great. How wrong was I? <laughs> but <laughs> what I've got here is I actually got a $1 bill. This is actually uh, generally all the way from America. I've actually keep this uh, in my wallet, um, almost as good luck. But uh, what I've found is with the, uh, with the $1, yeah, I'm going to keep this up here so you can see it. Um, if you take the one dollar, show you nothing in the hands, sleeves rolled up. We fold it once, twice, three times. All you need to do is just give it a little click like that and a little shake. And when you unfold it, the one dollar actually changes into a Scottish five pound note, just like that, which I can actually spend at the shop. Brilliant, fantastic! <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely, no that was that was impressive. Um, I would love to have this ability of changing the money into a little bit more in my pocket. Just you need to teach me this. <laughs> I will do. We'll do it after the call. <laughs> Amazing, fantastic, guys! Right, we've given you guys a couple of moments uh, before we get finishing up for um, today. Just wanted to check, guys, if there's any other final questions from you guys. And um, if you are joining us on repeat, make sure you comment hashtag repeat in the comment box below. That way, Elliot and I can always come back to you with any answers after the show is um, finished today. Um, it's um, obviously um, better if we can answer the questions for you now as. We we are still live and everyone can actually get that answer as well because that's the thing about questions is until the first person starts with questions everyone kind of feels a bit shy and then when the questions pop up everyone goes oh should have thought about this should have thought about that so um while we're still live we can definitely answer any of your final questions perfect lovely uh just um as we're waiting i'm going to check before we finish up um, for any final questions but um I wanted to say a um, massive thank you to, to Elliot, but before we finish up as well, is um, I'll tell you a little bit about how I can help you reduce your time spent on wedding planning, guys. Um, up on the screen just now, you can see a little link to my free guide. It's completely free of charge. The link is up on the screen right now, which is bit.ly forward slash Oscar hyphen mistakes hyphen two hyphen avoid and um, if you head there and you pop your email there you will be able to benefit from a free guide which is completely free of charge and it's got three top tips on how to reduce the time in wedding planning really really good advice and it actually talks about mistakes that a lot of couples make in the early stages of wedding planning that could save them time over in the rest of the wedding planning as well um, the other things that I can do for you guys is um, uh, wedding support ranges from one hour consultations and these are particularly popular with couples doing the wedding planning themselves and maybe needing a little bit of support with a particular um, suppliers to source or a particular element of the wedding um, to 
solve as well. Um, one couple has actually used me for their final details planning and we had a consultation. They actually said at the end of the consultation that it was like a sanity check for them and uh, for an expert to check over their plans, make sure that everything was perfect. I can also supply on the day coordination for those couples that maybe are planning a dry hire venue wedding where there isn't a person um, coordinating things or on the day I can be your right hand man there as well and supporting you on the day or maybe venues that have got wedding coordinators but they're not present there on the wedding day I can support you with that as well and obviously you've got your full wedding planning where I can help you with venue sourcing supplier sourcing um, and everything absolutely in between that all the way through to your wedding day and on the day coordination is included in that as well if you'd be interested in booking my 15 minute free consultation today head over to the link on the screen and download the free guide and it will take you to the booking for um, an appointment as well before we finish up, I just wanted to let you know, guys, that we are ready with the next um, interview next week with Jade from Crystal Bowes Bridal Boutique in Edinburgh. That will be on Thursday, the 3rd of September at 6 p.m. We'll be talking everything wedding dresses. Jade has actually kindly um, donated a dress for a bride in um and ill health um, for a wedding yesterday and um, there's been plenty of volunteers involved plenty of industry and um, colleagues and support provided for that wedding and Jade supplied four dresses for the bride to choose from um, as she's um, fighting cancer at the minute so I'm super excited to be um, speaking with Jade all about wedding dresses and wedding planning next week as well something to look forward to as well and um, before we get finished up I just wanted to pop us back on the screen. Elliot, your details are coming up on the screen as well. Um, guys, I'm just going to check. I think there was one more question. Perfect. Actually, yeah. question for you, Elliot. Okay. What's the funniest and proudest personal moment at a wedding you have performed at from Stuart? Um, it's probably one that stands out. I am. Um... So I was booked to this wedding for uh, the bride and groom and I knew that the bride, she was really into magic, but she was one of these, there's, there's two sort of types of people in magic that one set of people really love watching it and being entertained. And then you've got the other side, which always trying to work out exactly how you do the trick. And she was on that side, she was always trying to work out how I was doing the tricks. I actually went for a meeting with them and I was showing them a few bits and pieces and she was always trying to work it out. So I thought, uh, how am I going to try and create this amazing trick that she's obviously she's going to enjoy um, and really mess with her head and not be able to uh, and work it out. And I did it actually at the wedding where I actually borrowed her wedding ring. I no longer do this, but I thought, uh, let's try it. Um, I borrowed her wedding ring, did a few things with it, made it disappear and then made, uh, made the ring disappear and then reappear on the groom's finger. Um, so I made the yeah, it was the bride's wedding ring disappear and then reappear in the room's finger. Um, was she was she like, freaked out to begin with? Absolutely, yeah. Um, <laughs> although most people usually are when you ask them for their wedding ring, um, <laughs> when they're just married. So yeah, that yeah. was that's one moment that stands out and uh, it's still talked about to this day. Um, oh, yeah, that one trick. So, that sounds brilliant, oh, okay, and that's a that's a trick that I've never done ever i've never done it again i probably will i never will do it again but you do a one-off trick like that and it's something that was requested by the groom oh, you need to do this one trick whatever it is to try and impress it and uh yeah that's what you've done it fantastic yeah. that's brilliant guys um before we head um for today there is all contact details up on the screen for elliot you've got his telephone number website handles for facebook instagram youtube and also an email address as well so if you'd like to find out a little bit more about um how elliot can help you in your wedding entertainment planning and um, please um head over to his um, social media and his website and email address you've got my contact details up on the screen as well so if there's anything i can help you with i would love to to do so as well it's been an absolute pleasure elliot to have you with us today thank you very much for all the advice your time the tricks and everything else it's just been a wonderful experience all round is there any final things you would like to say to our um attendees today 
Uh, no, just say thanks very much for having me. And uh, yeah, if anyone anyone wants to uh, get in touch with me, feel free. I'm quite big on Instagram. I'm so ch- checking out there and everything that I'm doing. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for having me on. I said at the start, it's great what you're doing and showcasing lots of suppliers and what you do as well uh, at weddings and for couples is brilliant as well. Lots of people overlook a wedding, um, yeah. sort of someone to deal with the whole wedding and yeah. event planner and what you do is brilliant, bringing everything together. So thanks. Amazing. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you very much for all your engagement, all the questions and for being with us today as well. And um, we'll see you next Thursday at 6 p.m. with Crystal Bowles Bridal Boutique who have joined us at the end of the interview today as well. And we'll talk everything wedding dresses. So we'll see you next Thursday. You have a wonderful evening and we'll speak to you soon. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.